Hey, hello everybody, welcome back here at Gaming Boulevard. So today we're gonna show you the uh, D-pad, the left Joy-Con, including a D-pad made by Hori. So uh, these are available in Japan as we speak, but you can of course import them. So we're gonna unbox it and then have a quick look at how it functions on your Nintendo Switch. So this is the box. The box itself really is nice. Here you can see this uh, detail here. So that's, that's pretty cool. So already giving you a feeling of the D-pad. And then you have the front. Of course, this is in Japanese since it's not released uh, in the West yet. It's a nice switch box. And now we have the back. So it explains that you can only use it in handheld mode and you can't use it separately. So there's no way you can use it in television mode. That being said, let's take it out of the box. Comes in nice compartments. And there we go. So first there's the uh, little manual. Of course it's all in Japanese. Just indicating how to use it on your switch. And then here is the uh, Hori Joy-Con. So let's take it out. There we go. And this is it. Here it is. I really like the blue, so that's the first thing I notice. Let's compare it to the left Joy-Con on Nintendo Switch. So the first thing I notice is the weight. The original one is way heavier, so this includes the HD rumble and the uh, motion control. This one doesn't have all of that, but it means that it's a lot lighter. So it's actually a very light controller. And then of course the big difference is the D-pad you have a functioning D-pad instead of the four arrows. So you just slide it on your switch like you would with any other. And then let's see how it works. Let's see if it's paired. I'm gonna jump into the menu first. All right, so it's paired, you can already use it. There we go, so this works pretty good. This is really decent. Let's just give it a swing. So it really works good, but important to know is that you can't, you can't use it. And there goes the back, let's take a look here. So the back has a little, so the eject button is a bit bigger, but aside of that, it really looks great. But remember, you can't use it when you take it off. So now I cannot control my switch. So this is perhaps one of the biggest downsides. You can't do anything with it. There's no motion, there's no wireless connection. So you can only use it in handheld mode, but then it works instantly. So there's a great connection. I really like the color. The weight is okay. So the weight is a lot lighter than the normal Joy-Con. However, watch out. I did note that there are some, uh, there are some issues with it, especially when you load it, when you uh, charge it in your Switch, you can overload the dock or overload your uh, Nintendo Switch system itself. So there are some issues with it. Um, all in all, it's good. There are some differences. So the minus pad is sticking out way more than the uh, original one. So as you can see, the plus is really down there. Minus is really up here. Screen capture still works. The uh, analog stick works. The D-pad works. So I really like having a D-pad instead of the uh, four arrows, but it's a rather expensive Joy-Con expansion and it does limit your experience. Again, you cannot use it in TV mode or even in handheld mode using it separately from the Nintendo Switch. So always connecting is perhaps the biggest downside here, but I do love the color. I do love the D-pad. It really is a nice functional, functional and D-pad. So especially for games such as Street Fighter, this will be perfect. But 
it's not as complete as you might hope it would. So uh, I hope this video gave you a better look at what a Hori Joy-Con really is and what you can expect from it. So uh, thanks again guys for watching this video. I hope you liked it and uh, please subscribe to our YouTube channel for more of us in the future. Bye guys.